In this video, we're going to calibrate the 8000 series cart using the X35 and the extend feature. So with the X35, what it does is it gives us the capability of extending that monitor to a tablet like I have in front of me or your mobile phone. And then we can do some of these processes on the outside of the cart. So I have this monitor extended to the tablet here and we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the calibration from the side of the cart and not use the monitor at all. So in the extend feature we'll want to go in and we're going to hit the tank button putting it into our seed rate controller screen and then we're going to have to set up a couple things in the monitor before we go ahead and calibrate. So today we got floor dry in tank number one so that's what we're going to calibrate. So to bring out tank number one, just touch on number one, bringing it out to the big portion of the screen and we're going to want to put that product into the tank because you'll notice that in the tank right now we have 1251 and that's not what we're using so we're going to touch on it. Opening up to our products list, top line there it says product name so we can touch on there. We can go ahead and find our product that we're going to be calibrating, which is floor drive. If you don't have products in there, you may have to press new product and, and do a whole new product. Or if you've entered all your products prior to seeding or from years past, they should all be in this list and all you have to do is scroll and find the product that you want. Hit OK. Below there is your rate increment. So if I touch on rate increment, I can change how much that rate changes every time I hit the plus or minus symbol. And then you'll have your preset rate one and your preset rate two. So we'll bring out preset rate one and today we'll calibrate for 90 pounds. Press OK and then if you want you can have a preset rate two of whatever you want as well. So you can toggle between the two. And then below there you have your product density. So what we use product density for is to know how much physical product we can fit in each one of these tanks. If you want to figure out what your product density is, go ahead and find one of your white pails, fill it right up, level with the top, and then weigh it. You have 1.04 of a cubic foot. So we'll just calculate off that 0 0.04, and now we have pounds per cubic feet, and we can enter that in and put that on top of that product. And you can do that for every one of your products if you like. And then below there you have your cal factor. You'll notice that ours is set to zero. If you're building a new product or put a product in the tank and it is set to zero, you're gonna to have to put a starting cal factor in there so the tank knows where to start to spin the mark. metering augers too. So depending on what you have for metering auger, you're gonna to have to set one in and it's good starting point for each one is if you have a low output point one, double flight point two, single flight point three, and high output point four. So to do that we'll just touch on cal factor, manual entry, and then you can go ahead and you can put what you want for a starting cal factor. We'll put point two, Hit enter, now it's in there. You can hit the green check mark. And with that cal factor, what we're trying to figure out is how many pounds come out of that metering auger for one revolution. From there, we have our product all set up. Now we can go ahead and we can hit the green check mark. It'll ask you if you want to use your preset one as your requested rate, which we'll do, we'll press yes. Now our tank is ready to go. So from there we can go ahead and find our configuration tab, which is the gear and the wrench. Bring it out. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make sure that we have a manual speed set into there. If you want to go ahead and set a manual speed in there, just hit manual speed. It'll highlight the manual speed button. We can go ahead and touch it. And what we'll want to put in there is a speed that we consistently seed at. So for today, we're going to calibrate this machine at 5 mile an hour, which I have in there. Just hit the green check mark. Once it's set, we're good to go into calibration. So we'll go ahead and we'll hit multi-tank calibration. 
down to automatic tank calibration. Now we're in our calibration wizard. Just follow the steps along. It says we're doing granular calibration. Hit next to proceed. So we'll hit next. Now it's put our machine into calibrate. So now what we can do is we can come to the side of the cart. We can do what we need to do on the side of the cart. When we first come back, our fans will be running because you'll need your fan one circuit on. Then we'll have to change it from fan over to auger. What that does is it puts all of our hydraulic oil to our auger and our metering circuit. Now we have that. We can crawl underneath our tank, taking out our downspout out of the airstream, putting it into the calibration spout. So we drop it into a pail, throw one of our pails on there to catch that sample. And then with the new cart, every one of the 8,000s, you'll get a digital scale. This digital scale does give you the capability of holding a tear weight. So turn it on. Put the pail or whatever you're using to calibrate, and then go ahead and push the on zero button for about 10 seconds. Once you've done that, go ahead and let go, and it should show you zeros. And then when you take that pail off, it should show you the weight that it's going to subtract off the top of your sample weight. So now from there, everything is set up, we're ready to go. All we have to do now is turn on the tanks that we want to calibrate. So today we're going to do tank number one. Yellow light shows that we're in standby, waiting for us to hit the play button. So now we'll hit that play button. And it'll run out some product. But because that was a new product to the tank, we had to charge the augers. There was revolutions with no product coming out. So we ran until we saw a consistent stream of product just to charge that auger so we don't have any false revolutions. And then we'll go ahead Pull that pail out because we don't want to use the product that without any rev or without any product coming through the metering auger. But you'll notice our monitor has an estimated weight and revolutions. We can zero that from either the tablet or the side of the cart. So from the side of the cart, all we have to do is find that zero prime button. Green light tells it that we it did what we asked. And then you'll notice it's put it back to zeros. Got a fresh pail under there, and we can go ahead and turn on the tank that we want. And hit the play button. Now we're running on product. If you're doing a multi-tank calibration, which you can do, and one tank fills up faster than the other, just go ahead and turn off the corresponding switch to that tank and keep going with the rest. The larger the sample size, the more accurate our cal factor is, so we recommend that two-thirds of a pail product. Once we get an, an adequate sample size, we'll go ahead and just turn off the play button. Make sure our scale is on, grab our sample. put the weight in we have to press next to do that so we just hit the yellow arrow and then you'll see it's highlighted the tanks that we ran product out of so now just touch on it where it says zeros enter in our weight 9.8 and then hit green check mark once you have all your weights in there go ahead and hit next and then from this screen, it shows you your old cal factor, your new cal factor, and the percent difference between the two, which in our case is 49% different. But we know we didn't do anything wrong in our calibration process, so what we're going to want to do is save this new cal factor because we just had a starting one to start with. So we'll go ahead and hit the not save, so it shows saved. 
Now let's put that new cal factor onto that. And now what we'll do is we'll go verified and make sure that that new cal factor is actually what we want to use. So we'll go ahead and press OK. put it into calibration. This time what we'll do is we'll put it in calibrate on, from the side of the cart instead of the tablet, which you can do with the 8000 series cart. So just by touching, pushing the A button, letting go, green light shows that we've done what it's asked, and on your tablet you'll notice that it's put it into calibration for us. We have a fresh tail underneath. Again, just turning on the tanks that we want to calibrate, which is tank one, hit standby, waiting for us to hit the play button. You'll notice that the RPM has changed because of our new cal factor. Once we get that sample size that we're looking for, we can go ahead and stop the metering order either by the play button or you can touch the button on your tablet for your master switch. So there it's Turn that metering auger off. We can grab our sample. Weigh our product. So we get our sample weight, which is 12.6. Again, we can't put the weight into that screen, so we'll go ahead and press next. It's highlighted, so we'll go ahead and open it up. 12. Green check mark. Now that we have all our weights in there for the products, we'll go ahead and press next. So again, it shows you your old cal factor on the screen plus your new cal factor, and you'll notice this time when we calibrated it, there is no percent difference because the cal factor is exactly the same. So we come out here and we verified that that new cal factor is actually right. If it was off a little bit, it would have given you a percent difference. And if it's within that 10%, we should be good, but we'll still want to keep that new cal factor. And again, you would go ahead and press that save button to save that new cal factor to that product. Once we're done there, we can hit the green check mark. And now our product is calibrated, our tank is monitor is ready to go. All we have to do is come back to the side of the cart, clean things up, put things away. Remembering to go underneath our cart, taking our downspout out of the calibration spout, putting it into the airstream that we want. Or we're going to solid seat and strip the size of the tablet. Or, and then the last thing we need to do before we leave the side of the cart is go ahead and turn our fan circuit back on. So that we 